We've seen a change with younger generations, particularly those who've been brought up, uh, educated uh, after we joined Europe, who have become um, more cosmopolitan. They've also changed their kind of national identity away from the rather um, what we call the, an ethnic view of the nation to a much more civic conception uh, of the nation. Generally speaking, um, younger people are not politically disengaged and that's kind of a, a, um, an assumption that's based on um, a traditional way of doing politics which is that people vote um, and they're affiliated to a party and that's how you express yourself politically. For younger people that's just not the case anymore but it's not to mean that that means that they um, aren't politically interested or politically engaged. Young people don't really want to embed themselves in institutions. What they want to do is discover politics, mobilise with other young people, see it, as a, see it as something social, which to be honest it was maybe 10, 20, 30 years ago when young people got together in, I don't know, the Conservative Club or Labour Club or trade unions. Um, now they want to do it through social networks and that's the way that information about politics can be shared and people can be mobilised. It's not necessarily that their issues are completely different, it's uh, perhaps that they attach a different weighting to the salience of certain issues. So I, I think it's simply about, uh, you know, obviously what you can put out on broadcast, you're limited um, in terms of the way campaigns are over here. It's not like the US where you can simply pump out um, endless reams of TV adverts, it's very limited. So I think um, if they want to engage with young people, they've actually got to perhaps make a bit more of an effort um, to actually um, get young people in a room, um, in, in rallies, and perhaps uh, more targeted message uh, via social media and um, perhaps some of the platforms that young people are actually engaging with as well. There is a huge appetite for facts. So I was in Manchester all day on a Sunday uh, doing uh, debates on Europe and also explaining about the Eurozone. And people really want to understand. Uh, and what we suddenly find is that, uh, except in some schools that really bring the right people in, uh, there isn't any emphasis in making people understand what Europe is all about, how it works, why it matters, what are its values, what it has done politically in terms of stopping wars, for example. I, I think that there is definitely sort of like a a gap in the market for how the debate is spoken about um, and I think that a lot of engagement could be done on sort of Twitter and Facebook but actually I don't think that's what young people want to see in the main part. I think that politicians actually going out there, firstly you know from ground level upwards politicians have got to build themselves as trustworthy people and people who care about young people and people who genuinely have the public's issues at heart and I don't think at the moment they do. I think a lot of the debate so far has been about facts, figures, will the economy decrease or increase by four percent or six percent and to be honest most people I don't know I can't legitimately say most people a lot of people don't vote like that they vote on how they feel they vote on does this feel like the right thing to do do I feel warmly towards this and I think with Europe you get a lot of that I think a lot of young people do feel warmly about Europe but then none of the arguments being put forward have been about cooperation working together. I think there has been a lack of a positive message to have come out of really either side uh, in the EU referendum debate. I think young people probably are looking for something like that a little bit more. We saw in Scotland that you really can mobilise and engage young people if you've got a strong positive message.